IBM trading at levels it hasn't seen since 2017, raising the question, is this the moment in 2024 when AI could fuel sustained stock gains? Well, joining us now with his perspective on AI, consulting and more, is Arvind Krishna, the CEO of IBM. Arvind, I'm still going to say Happy New Year, even though we're a week and a half <laughs> in. It's my first time seeing you. Thanks for joining us on Overtime. Um, your, your portfolio is way different than it was four years ago. Your product and service portfolio, you've got Red Hat, you don't have Kindrel. So to what extent can your consulting business now help you with AI as industries in 24 start adopting it? Yeah, so, John, happy new year to you as well and to all of your viewers. I don't think I've been on the show this year at all. <laughs> so, look, if I think about AI, I think we've got to step back and accept how much AI is going to change the productivity of all the businesses we work with. Uh, McKinsey's estimate is over $4 trillion a year. On a global GDP of $80 trillion, that's 5%. As a business person, I would tell you, there's very few things that can give you 5% more productivity or bottom line, which you can then reinvest to get better top line in a given year. So that kind of is what all the excitement is about, and we all feel that. As in any market, early years are all going to be about deployment. How do we get AI deployed? And that is where our consulting team is such a big advantage for us, whether it's deploying our own AI or all of the open source models we work with or many of the partners that we work with. Getting this deployed is going to unlock all those use cases. And we'll touch on those use cases, but one that particularly excites me is about uh, code. Code as in programming languages and how it can make every one of those programmers more productive. Yeah, and data ingest is one of those areas that's important. Getting data into data lakes, whatever you want to call them, uh, so that it can be worked with, it can be analyzed, it can be useful for AI. How quickly are your consultants going to be able to do that versus other means of doing it so, so that we actually start to see that sort of momentum and margin benefit for IBM for the preparation process for getting the use yeah. from AI? I'll give you a great use case from a client we are working with. So they were running a process. They had a lot of data inside the company. They bring in data from outside the company, and they were preparing reports that they gave, some to their clients and some that they were selling. A two-week process overall in terms of hundreds of underlying hours of work to do all that. Using generative AI to both do the ingestion process, do the report preparation, and send it out, less than two hours. You think about that, two weeks to two hours, and taking less overall complexity along the way, which also generally means fewer errors, I think that's the kind of advantage we're going to see. I think in terms of data preparation, all of the techniques in AI to sort of get rid of many of these people-based, rule-based processes and be able to in ingest all of the data, huge market opportunity. I think that by itself is to be measured in the hundreds of billions each year for the next decade probably, John. Uh, Arvind, we talked about, I don't know, a little less than a year and a half ago, I remember, uh, and, and we were talking about the impact of the tight labor market, and you said the fact that you have this technical and consulting workforce was going to be an advantage for you. I'm looking at your performance lately versus Accenture. Uh, you know, Melius did this report. We've had Ben writes us on. Uh, you, you've done pretty well over the last few quarters, year-over-year year, growth-wise. How, and I know this, this isn't earnings, so we're not talking about specific numbers, but how much can that continue based on the efficiency with which you feel IBM is moving? Look, I believe that this is going to be a decade-long play. I've held the view, and I've been very articulate, that a lot of the advanced economies have a demographic deficit. By that, I mean we have fewer and fewer skilled people each year. It's just a fact. I'm not pro or con that. In that environment, those who have skilled people can be, are going to be able to win more business and be more productive with that. But it's not just enough to have skilled people. You've got to bring the technologies to bear that make the people themselves a lot more productive. That's where AI comes to play. That's where hybrid cloud comes to play. That's where automation comes to play. You mentioned data lakes, they come to play. And in the future, quantum. It's that combination that's going to drive growth of a sustainable nature, 
and every one of our clients wants to use technology to improve their business. So that is where kind of we begin to get a great outcome, as you've seen over the last uh, couple of years.